Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Am I standing too close? Um, as most of you know, and some of you don't, I am Elizabeth Webster. I'm a council member and ex-chairman of the Caspian Hall Society and of the uh, International Caspian Society. I bred Caspians for nearly 20 years and been involved with them for almost 43 years. You may wonder why the Caspian horse deserves such a generous gesture as the unique Caspian calendar we see here tonight. The calendar marks, as we've just heard, the 50 years since the remarkable horsewoman, Louise Ferouz, discovered what she would later name the Caspian. Her young riding school pupils had difficulty learning to ride on the large white horses available to them. In 1965, she searched an area where small, narrow ponies were rumored to have been seen occasionally among the lush vegetation, mountains, and hidden villages near the Caspian Sea in northern Iran. And having just been there, I can see where they would lurk. Her amazement and fascination when she did find a few of these fine creatures led to intensive research into their history, physiology, and genealogy. While her young pupils thus discovered their comfortable conformation, athleticism, and willing natures. She decided to call her finds Caspians after the area where she discovered them. The ponies turned out to be horses. Despite their small size, in conformation, balance, proportions, gaits, and temperament, they were true horses. The Caspians also had several anatomical specialities of their own, which helped to link them to ancient bones in northern Iran that had puzzled archaeologists and equine historians for many years. Further research revealed their senior role in the probable development of most of the hot-blooded breeds we know today, which makes the discovery of the Caspian horse of vital interest to equine historians. After finding a few more specimens, Louise Ferouz set up a breeding unit with the initial aim of checking that they bred true to type before revealing her discovery to the world. In the early 1970s, I saw my first Caspians, then still described as ponies. These two youngsters were the progeny of purebred cut stock taken to Bermuda by Louise's friend Joan Taplin. I was probably hooked from that moment. Within little more than a year, my mother and I owned these two and had been put in touch with Louise Ferouz. In 1975, we imported the first Iranian bred stock from Louise, followed by the remaining Bermuda stock and two more groups from Iran. And of course, we met the remarkable the indomitable Louise. With her help and encouragement, we set up the first Caspian stud outside Iran, started the British Stud Book, founded the British Caspian Society, which is the forerunner to the Caspian Horse Society of today, and published the first international Caspian Stud Book. His Royal Highness Prince Philip, who had been presented with two Caspians during the celebrations of 2,500 years of the Peacock Throne, loaned them to us for breeding process, purposes. His crown equerry, the late Colonel Sir John Miller, gave us valuable support in the early years and later became our first patron. All this groundwork established a proper base for the Caspian outside Iran, where the politics of the time made it almost impossible to keep breeding records secure. Despite the hard work, we grew more and more impressed with our Caspian horses as we got to know them. Their ability to learn quickly and their willing and kind natures were as important to us as their beauty and their astonishing history. Each one was a much-loved character. Under the Hopston prefix, my family bred Caspians for nearly 20 years. During this time, we exhibited them at the top national agricultural show, the Royal Show, for 18 years and introduced them via television, radio, film, press, and guest appearances around Britain. Several of our young Caspians went to British owners who competed highly successfully in carriage driving, scurry, inventing, and jumping. We exported Caspians to Australia and New Zealand, where they continually won ribbons for Jim Carner, ridden cross-country jumping and driving during the 1980s and 90s. In New Zealand, the impressive agility of the Caspian was ex exploited in several first crosses, mainly with thoroughbreds, Arabs, and Welsh, several going on to win leading national competitions in several spheres, year after year. The Hobston bred Caspian stallion Atesh and one of his half thoroughbred sons both won the status of approved sire of competition ponies and horses in New Zealand. Considering the tiny population of Caspians, such results were truly extraordinary. 
The Hopster Stud closed many years ago, but I'm glad to say that the Caspian keeps on winning new friends. Caspians bred in Sweden have been as successful as those in New Zealand, shaking up the pony racing world and winning in show jumping, eventing, and dressage. They also have had great success with first crosses, winning top competitions and fetching high prices. My central message to you all tonight is that as Louise found, the Caspian is the perfect mount for young children. He's the right shape for small legs and has a kind temperament, balance, responses, and gaits of the larger, well-bred horse they will hope one day to ride, if they're lucky, without having to relearn the seats and aids all over again. For the young competitive rider, the Caspian has amply shown that he makes the ideal sports horse in small size, with an immense enthusiasm and capacity for jumping and competition of all sorts. As a mount for children's polo, he or she has enormous potential, yet the versatile Caspian is also used by riding for the disabled. The Caspian is easily trained to harness, so he can be driven by a parent while the children are away at school. Caspians can be enjoyed trotting around the roads and lanes at home, or competing in cross-country obstacle and driving club events, or in the elegant concours classes. They're bred in several parts of the world these days. Early this September, Caspian supporters from 11 countries gathered in Rasht, northern Iran, where Louise found several of her Caspians. The Equestrian Federation of Iran and the International Caspian Society hosted a very well-attended two-day international conference on the Caspian and a popular breed show. A vital network of breeders, laboratories, and experts in equine-assisted reproduction was established, which bodes well for the future of the Caspian horse. As a celebration of the 50 years since her significant discovery, I'm sure Louise would have been very proud to see that all her hard work is starting to bear fruit in Iran. <clears throat> The Caspian Horse Society plans to establish a gene or sperm bank to give breeders around the world access to the bloodlines they need to prevent inbreeding and ensure the continued integrity of the Caspian breed. We'll be working with acknowledged pioneers and experts in the field, and new protocols will be sought so that the Iranian bloodlines can be made available as soon as possible. For European breeders, it's also important that semen from good Caspian stallions is available for crossbreeding by artificial insemination as well as for maintaining the purebred herd. For this anniversary year, Colin Barker, the renowned equine photographer and member of the Caspian Horse Society, has joined forces with Farouk Karushi, leading filmmaker and council member of this society. Having traveled the word to photograph Caspian horses for this special anniversary calendar, they hope you will help them to raise sufficient funds to establish the world's first Caspian horse sperm bank. So on behalf of our society and Caspian Follows Everywhere, I would like to salute and thank Colin and Farrokh very much indeed. We hope you will purchase a unique signed Caspian calendar tonight to support this wonderful endeavor of theirs and further preserve the Caspian horse for the future. I will now hand you over to Farrokh. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. It's so great to see so many of you here to support us. What I'd like to do is show you a short film, then I'll say a few words. What you are about to hear is a true and unique story about a mystical and very rare animal. For over two centuries, archeological scholars working in Persepolis had been looking for a missing horse. Whilst all the animals depicted in the carvings were of correct proportions, the size of one animal puzzled everyone. Further archaeological discoveries confirmed the view that such a fine horse must have existed. So the race was on to find this unusual animal. For 150 years, scholars combed the region in search of the missing horse, but to no avail. Eventually, all was given up and the horse was thought to be extinct. But then one summer's day in 1965, Louise Firouz came across this site in our mall. Not quite believing her eyes, she approached the owner and asked about the horse. She was told that they were very, very rare, but there were still a few around. Overwhelmed by excitement, Louise and her husband set about collecting as many of the remaining specimens as they could find. 
A further surprise was the discovery that this spirited little creature was a true horse and not a pony. They decided to call their newfound treasure the Caspian Horse. Louise spent the rest of her life breeding and promoting these historic animals. Fifty years later, there are barely a thousand known Caspian horses around the world. This unique Iranian national heritage is not out of danger yet. It needs all our support to survive. 2015 is the 50th anniversary of the rediscovery of the Caspian horse. To celebrate this momentous occasion, and with support from the Caspian Horse Society, Iranian-born film director Farouk Kurushi and the renowned equine photographer Colin Barker have traveled the globe to photograph the finest remaining horses in some spectacular locations and have produced a high-quality anniversary wall calendar. They hope that the calendar's sales will help raise enough funds to set up a Caspian horse sperm bank so that samples from the best Caspian stallions in Iran and elsewhere can be collected and frozen for posterity to continue, improve and multiply the breed. Your help and support is needed to realize this project. By purchasing a copy of the calendar, you'll make a valuable contribution. To reserve your copy, please visit www.caspianproductions.co.uk. Thank you. Now you know. Um, my love affair with the Caspian horse started in 1965, when I was a little boy and I read about it in the newspapers. Having joined the Caspian Horse Society decades later, I quickly realized that the, this animal was in trouble and something had to be done to protect it. Having then realized that 2015 was going to be the 50th anniversary of the rediscovery of the calendar, I decided to find the right photographer, go around the world, find the best Caspians alive today, and make a commemorative calendar. My chosen photographer was Colin Barker. I've known Colin for many years, and I knew that his love of horses was key to the success of this project. Colin and I have traveled some 23,000 miles in the last 18 months, and we've taken enough photographs that if we were to produce a desk calendar with one photograph for each and every day of the year, we'll have a choice of 100 photographs for each day. That's how many photographs we've taken. Now you can imagine the task of choosing 12 of those to make a calendar. Colin and I have, some, have had some very interesting telephone discussions. I would like to thank the Caspian Horse Society, particularly Elizabeth Webster and Ruth Staines for having introduced us to the owners of these wonderful animals in far corners of the world. But, and we've dedicated the last page of the calendar to this huge list of people that we need to thank. So sometime later, if you've helped with this project, you'll see your name on the screen up there and at the last, on the last page of the calendar. But a few heroes should be singled out now. Atashe Firuz, whose mother discovered the horses, was instrumental in organizing the Iran trip, and she introduced us to almost everybody who was associated with the Caspian horses, and particularly to the most wonderful Abol Emami, who knew the Gilan region like the back of his hand, and without his support and his knowledge and his generosity, we couldn't have really gone to Iran and done those photographs. I would like to thank Grant Willis, Panna Rose, and Sarah Westwood, who helped us design this magnificent and beautiful calendar. This is no ordinary calendar. It's a very clever piece of work. I thank and salute them for it. I would also like to thank Gary Bird, who, to, to cook, who took on the really difficult and challenging task of printing the calendar and just about getting here today. Gary's over there. Thank you, Gary. Really appreciate it. A special thanks goes to IHF, of course, for having taken us under their wing and having set up this wonderful event. 
And the last but not least is my very good friend, Colin, whose masterpiece, masterpieces you're about to see in that room very soon. We, but before I do, I have to say this. Colin and I have given two years of our lives to this project. We've practically done nothing else. It is up to you now to step forward and support us. We've only printed 1,000 calendars, and we've got several dozen prints to sell to raise funds to set up the Caspian Horse Sperm Bank project. It's just Colin and I. There is no publishing department. There is no PR department. There is no back office. It's just us two. You are the rest of the team. Without your help, we can't do this. So please be our ambassadors, our supporters. Tweet, email, Facebook. Do whatever you can to persuade others to buy the calendar and help us just about pull this off. It is possible to do, but a pile of unsold calendars sitting in my studio is not going to do it. So please get out there, enjoy yourself, and help us sell some calendars. And one other thing before I go, please join the Caspian Horse Society. Anybody wearing one of those badges tonight can answer the questions. We've got a membership that needs increasing. Those of you who really are interested, please join the Caspian Horse Society. And between us, we can pull this off. Remember, there are less Caspians in the world than there are pandas. They are that rare. I leave you with that thought. Thank you for coming.